Okay, let's get going here. It's uh, 424. This is video number 62, and we're solving the problems of uh, uh, assignment number 27. Okay, so we'll take a little time here to do this. The, um, the first one, if I read it off, it says the cone is sliced. So there's my um, idea of a knife uh, from, the vertic uh, from the vertex vertically. So really, it's just sliced in two. Well, when you see that it's sliced in two, and it's sliced perpendicularly, that means you're making a right triangle when, it come, when the knife comes down here. Don't you see that you've made yourself two triangles, okay? And so the question asks, um, if the height is eight and the radius is six, it's asking you uh, to find the perimeter of the object uh, that is formed. Well, the object that's formed is just a right triangle, okay? And um, since we cut it in half and make a right triangle here, then this is six, this is six, and this is eight, okay? So, um, excuse me, so the, the height is eight, not the slant, and the height is eight. So the perimeter is going to be uh, six plus six is 12, 6, 8, 10, so it's going to be 32 units. And I know that a lot of kids sent me a, a little letter there saying that they found that very confusing. It was just the English. So be prepared on the test for that kind of thing. Uh, they'll have some artwork there to explain it to you, but they can slice this vertically. If you slice it um, horizontally, uh, your object will be something like this, which came up on the common core, and there's the other half there. So uh, they'll ask you uh, what objects were made, what kind. So one more time, if I slice it vertically, and I make a little right triangle when I get there, that's the object that's formed. Remember I talked once about a cake, and if I take the same knife, and cut it in half, right, there's the uh, diameter there, then you just get a triangle. So you'll, lose, you'll use your imagination there, and you'll be prepared uh, to do these kind of problems. Anyway, I'll be solving every problem on the test uh, for you, no matter what happens. Okay, and in number two is another word problem. It says that a cone has its radius tripled and its height doubled. So the original cone, we don't need to make a picture, we just need to know the formula, is um, one-third pi r squared h. So now I'm going to triple the radius, and I'm going to double the height. And then I'm asked to find the ratio from the um, original on the bottom to the new on the top. So again, as I mentioned before, there are no numbers like there were in number one. It's just R and H as variables. And so now when I write this out, I get a one-third pi nine R squared uh, times um, two H. But you see that? And now I, um, uh, going to put this as a ratio over the original, which as I wrote over here, was uh, one-third pi r squared h. And so you don't need to be good in math to see what happens. Any number divided by itself is one. The r squares eliminate and the h eliminates. So the ratio is 18 to one, the new to the original if you follow what I'm saying. And they'll ask that on the test as well, okay? So again, maybe the confusion lies in the fact that some kids said I do number two for me, is they're not telling you what H is, they're not telling you what R is. So you just write them out and you cancel numbers that are the same because any variable divided by itself, any number divided by itself, no matter what it is, as long as it's not zero, is a, um, is one, that is, it cancels, okay. So now we go on to this next problem. There will be one octagon on your test, so I thought I'd 
try to help you here. A regular octagon, like I told you, means the sides are congruent and all the angles are congruent. What are the angles here? 360 divided by 8, and uh, that would be 40. Uh, that takes us back to right angle trigonometry. Uh, we won't be doing that for a while, but uh, just to let you know, every angle, based on what I just said, is 40 degrees. So it's a regular octagon, each side is 10, and then they tell you that, um, then they tell you that the width down here is 22. You know you're going to see your, right, uh, your Pythagorean triples here, and this is 26. So since it's a compound figure, I divvy it up into places. Oh, isn't that uh, shocking that 10 is a, a multiple of 5, so we know, and it's a slant, as you can see. And of course, this is 10. We'll use that in a second. So all we have to do now is find the uh, trapezoid. But since everybody's congruent here, right, and the length is 26, and uh, this is going to be the same thing over here, so it would, in this case, be uh, 2x, 16 minus 2x, but since um, x must be congruent, then each side here is, um, must be 8. So over here, let's write that out over here. This is the 22 part, so this is going to be 8, and this is going to be 8. And using the same reasoning, this is going to be 6. So there we go. We have everything written out now. Uh, we, have, we have on the top... Uh, two trapezoids whose height is 8 and the top side is 10 uh, base I should say and the bottom side is uh, 22 and the whole thing's divided by 2 so that will be this guy and this guy since they're congruent and then it's 22 times 10 that gives you the rectangle Write that out a little better here so you can see it. Uh, 22 uh, times 10. And now I just have to add everything up. So there that goes away. And um, we have, let's see, I did the numbers out so I don't waste your time. Let's see, we have over here, um, we have uh, 32 times 8. Okay, for the first trapezoid. And uh, we'll put that, it looks like my number is right, I don't like that number. Uh, so one more time, 10 plus 22 is 32. The twos cancel, there were two of them. And this, of course, is 220. And we'll just multiply 32 times 8 here. And uh, we get 256 plus 220. And uh, I'll just add them together since I'm on the calculator now. And you come up with 476 uh, square units, which I got before. Okay. All right? So I know some of you are having difficulties with these. But remember, the test comes with pictures and diagrams and all that stuff. And uh, there's never Pythagorean triples on this. Their problems will be even easier. I just thought I'd make it a little more challenging for you. And that brings us up to uh, how are we doing time-wise? Uh, okay, we're doing good, and uh, now I have time uh, to do number four, right, and uh, let me get that in front of me here, and number four is, um, is which is bigger, you have a, um, and we'll erase this here, you have a, um, a right rectangular prism, And uh, then you have a cube, and they're asking you which is, uh, has a greater volume, and by how much, or is it surface area in this problem? It's volume. But then my surface area volume, all of that stuff you can handle. It's really not much more than seventh grade math. And here we go. And of course, um, it says in cubic feet. So again, you have to... Um, you have to do your conversions. You'll be expected to do that. 
So this is four yards. Um, this is one yard. And this is three yards. And the cube, uh, as we make the cube, excuse me, and here we make the cube, and the cube is 2.5 yards, okay? So you do your conversion. Three times four is 12, okay? One times three is three, and three times three is nine. So there's your conversion method. Expected to do that really in sixth and seventh grade, not just in eighth grade. And so when, um, when I write that out, um, I'll get my number, I'll do that in a second. And then of course, uh, I have the cube, which is um, again, uh, 2.5 uh, cubed, since that's a cube right there. And 2.5, excuse me, uh, times three. So that looks like that would be, uh, let's see, that would be 7.5 cubed, and this number would be uh, 36 times nine. And we'll put that on the calculator right now. We'll put a line in here. Whichever is bigger, we take the difference in cubic feet. So really, it's not asking you to do all that much. Uh, 36 times nine is uh, 324 cubic feet. And 7.5, remember how to use that arrow button. Uh, you certainly need it in high school. Um, it says it's a syntax area here. Uh, three. And uh, that's uh, 4,400. Let me see. I'm looking carefully here. This calculator's had better days. Uh, hold on. Yeah, it's 421.86. I'm rounding to 100. Uh, they said they want it to be uh, to a 10. So this would, uh, so this would be uh, 421.9. And if I'm off, didn't do it right because there's a lot of glare on my calculator, you'll be fine. And uh, 421.9, because I know I made a mistake yesterday. Um, I put the wrong number in, okay? And a number of kids called me or let me know that I made some sort of mistake there. I believe it was 4.5 for the radius instead of 2.5, and that was problem number two. I do apologize for that. Uh, and that would be uh, 497.9 uh, 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 um, cubic, right? Since we're talking about that, feet would be their difference. So yet again, they're just asking you to convert once you convert, you get your numbers out, uh, you divide them like that, and hopefully there's no mistakes here. But say there were, the uh, general idea is very clear, okay? Because uh, it was pointed out that sometimes I mess up my numbers here, but the idea should be crystal clear. And you'll be able to pick all that stuff up on the test. And uh, how are we doing here? Uh, 13, okay. So let's see what happens with this last problem. Um, we have this substance, okay, here. and it's inside this white rectangular prism, and um, you need to calculate the volume and multiply it by uh, cubic inches, which is the weight that often scientists in the United States use to explain uh, uh, scientific stuff to Americans, since we understand the cubic inch much, much, much better. And so I make a little sketch of this figure here, and I put it together, and um, the numbers are two yards, uh, half a yard. We chose small numbers, and so does the test, because we don't want the numbers to get all blown up. Uh, one yard, and then I just do my uh, conversions here. And uh, two yards are um, two uh, times. So one yard is um, one yard is uh, 36. So that means it would be one yard is 36 inches. So it would be two times 72. And on the other hand, uh, we have uh, this is going to be times uh, one half times 
times uh, 36 inches in yards. And uh, finally, one yard, of course, is uh, 36. And we're going to multiply all these guys together. And then we're going to multiply it by the, um, so this is one yard, of course, equals 36 inches. And you should be able to figure that out without any trouble. So let's see, uh, 2 times 72 times 18 times 36. And I come up with um, 93312, if I didn't make a mistake there. And I'm going to multiply that. Um, let's see, we got that right. Um, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, 32, 72 times 82 times 36 uh, times 36, that's correct, times 0 .0005. And when I do that, then I come up with the weight. One, two, three, got to count your zeros carefully. Uh, I come up with the weight, and I come up with 46.7 pounds for this object. And one more time, I'm a little over the... Uh, the thing, well, hopefully it works. Uh, there's the conversion for two yards. There's the conversion for one yard. There's the conversion for the other one. When I multiply them left to right, I come up with this, and I multiply it by the weight per cubic inch. So same as the previous problem, convert and figure out what you got here. So I'm going to leave that uh, the way it is, and hopefully this will upload. Let's see what happens.